If you're someone who has always wanted to get consistent clients in their online service-based business without the pressure to post on social media, I made this podcast specifically for you. I'm Leslie Stevens, and I am so excited to welcome you to the Not an Influencer show, where we chat about other organic marketing strategies that you can use to bring clients into your business quickly and easily, and the tangible tips for you to move forward faster in your business, and the stories of the entrepreneurs who are doing the same every single day. You do not have to be an influencer to be an impact maker and a successful online business owner. If you have ever spent way too much time and energy pumping out endless content for social media with little to no clients in return, let's stop doing it the hard way and let's do it the easy way with the client connection method. I teach this method in depth in my free training, how to book consistent clients without having to post on social media. The link is in the description. Go ahead, click it to grab your spot. I cannot wait for you guys to hear what Hannah has to say. Hannah, before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about you and what you do? Sure. So I started my business back in 2017, which feels like forever ago. (laughs) Time flies so fast. Um, And I started my business as a virtual assistant. Um, and then I kind of over time niched down into blog management for photographers. So I started my business, um, I was doing primary teaching at university. Um, and if you can't already tell, I am Australian. So <laughs> I just <laughs> left school. I started studying and really just wanted a like job on the side. Um, and so that's kind of how I went into the business world. And that was my first kind of entrance in. And then from there, mm-hmm. grew really quickly from three to 27 clients in six months. And that was like, awesome, but very stretching. And obviously then I was like, crap, I actually now need a team. This earns way more than teaching, like all the things. (laughs) What Um, did I do? (laughs) Yeah, I know, right? This is awesome. Like, (laughs) exactly. Um, So yeah, that's kind of like my journey. And so now to this day, I still have one-on-one clients because I just believe that it's such a good business model and I love being able to serve in that way. Um, but I also do kind of coaching and education as well to help others um, grow their businesses and get better schedules and that kind of thing. So yeah, I love it. It's such a like crazy world, the business world, but once you're in it, it's impossible to leave. I feel. <laughs> oh yeah. It's too much fun for that. That's incredible. You grew so quickly. So when you first started, did you have any challenges getting clients at first? Yeah. So my first ever client, um, was literally, I honestly don't even know how I was following them. They were a business coach in the U S and, um, I hadn't really even researched into the business world. Like I just didn't really know much about it, but I saw she was um, posted on her Instagram story that she was looking for a VA. And so I reached out to her and was like, look, I've literally never done this. Like (laughs) I've literally only had a personal email account and that's about it. Um, And so she was so gracious in offering me that job. And so that was like about three months where I didn't even try and look for other clients because I just thought she'd be my only one. Um, And I learned a lot from her. Like I had to understand how to actually create a contract and send one and like, you know, all of those kind of things. So I think that first kind of three months, I wasn't even trying to look for clients. But then after that, I had about, I would say three months of really trial and error. So like I would get clients just from some friends around me and that kind of thing. Um, And then once I really refined my services, that's when it was so much easier to book and kind of scale the services. But I wouldn't ever say I've struggled to book clients, but there has definitely been trial and error in the most effective way to book them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, Definitely. I feel like there's trial and error whenever you like, you have to allow yourself that space to have trial and error because there are so many different ways to be successful. You have to find the way that's going to work for you and your business. Yeah. So So how do you get clients now besides like using any social media or anything like that? Totally. Yeah. So I, um, 
like when I went through that phase of going from three to 27 clients, my literal two strategies was cold pitching um, and referrals. And they are the main two strategies I use to this day for my one-on-one client services. Because I remember like posting my website being like, all right, yay, now they're all going to come. And, you know, and I had like maybe a hundred followers on Instagram at the time of like ideal fit people other than friends. And I was like, oh, this isn't how it is works. Like why do like people say you can get all these things on social media and all of that. And I was like, I don't even have a following on social media. It's going to take me forever to build that and grow that and that kind of thing. So um, I was like, well, how are these ideal dream clients going to find me? Like I have to get in front of them. And so once I was able to book like some of those cold um, pitches, then referrals kind of stepped in because they were then referring people because of the services. And so to this day, I would say like originally about 80% of my clients came from cold pitching and 20% came from referrals. Now it's like pretty much the opposite. So like 80% come Mm -hmm. from referrals and about 20% um, come from cold pitching. And then I have a few from Instagram now because I have a bigger like it's not even that big to be honest, but like more of an established name, but Mm -hmm. it's way more about cold pitching and referrals still for one-on-one services. Yeah. I think so much of like the social media world makes business seem backwards. Like that's my philosophy on it. Like it's fantastic. Social media marketing is awesome, but to have Mm -hmm. A business, you need to have clients and to have clients, yes. especially in the beginning stages, it's all about relationships. And I love that you use cold pitching because yeah, <laughs> cold pitching makes people like, I feel like just that phrase makes people like freeze up and be like, no way would I ever <laughs> use a cold pitch. It's, exactly. it's so intimidating. But like when you get into business, when you learn sales psychology, when like you understand so clearly what you do, cold Mm. pitching is becomes so normal and it becomes more natural. So can you describe to us a little bit about like your process of what a cold pitch looks like? So it's a little less intimidating. (laughs) Totally. Great question as well, because I feel like that's why cold pitching gets such a bad rap is because... We're like, no of those like very cringe emails that you can get or like, you know, a bad phone call of someone trying to pitch you a service. Like it's definitely not that. Um, So what my uh, strategy looked like in the beginning and still to this day, like honestly, I've hardly changed it is I will do a lot of research because when you're cold pitching someone, you don't want it to be like one template and you just change one little thing about it because that's pretty obvious right so you've got to actually like do the research so i will go okay do they even have a team right now of someone in my position that i offer um do they like i don't know have they just gone through a life stage like pregnancy or got a married or something like that that i can celebrate um what did they do for their business who do they serve like really take some time to actually dive in and I will look at their social media, their website and what's relevant for me. So like way back when I was doing my business, I was um, Pinterest management. So I would have a look at their Pinterest account as well. Right. So that's the first part is like, I do the research uh, and I make a list of like heaps of people because I think it's not like a magic bullet where it's like every pitch you send, you're going to book a client from because like no marketing strategy is like that. Unless someone's found one, please let me know. But um, yeah, let us all know. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, But I found like when I sent my first 10 pitches, I remember being like, oh my gosh, no one's replied. This is so hard. And out of those 10 people, two replied and one became a client. So like then I kind of know, okay, for every one client I want, I've got to send 10 pitches. So that's kind of like the math behind it, I guess. But yeah, so I would do the research. And then from there, I craft the pitch and I did my pitches via email because that was kind of where I was most confident uh, and where my clients were looking and hanging out. So that worked for me, but I know some of my friends use Instagram pitching um, and, you know, all the things depending on what makes most sense. But in the pitch, I basically started the pitch with that like 
connection point from the research I'd done so that immediately they see like, okay, I, this person isn't just using some template to a million different people. Like they can tell I, that they've done some research behind me. And I also start with something like, I know your val your time is valuable. So I'll make this quick. Like I definitely am always about them and their time and like, you know, giving them the benefit of the doubt. So that's what I kind of do. And then in the pitch, I then craft like kind of a little bit about my services and how it helps them. And just the heart behind as a business owner, like my highest priority is to serve you. Um, and just kind of saying like, I understand if the timing isn't right to bring me on, but I couldn't help but reach out because you'd be such a dream client to work with. Like pitching is very much about honoring them um, showing that you've spent time researching them and then clearly giving them your service options um, <clears throat> and how you can help support them. So that's kind of like what my pitch looks like. And then from there, I usually did like a follow-up pitch as well um, if they didn't reply like a week later. And then from there, if I didn't hear, I'd kind of like move on to the next one. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the strategy I've used and it's been so effective and especially as the more you do, the more you can refine it and see what works and see what doesn't. And the more clients I got, especially ones who were like established within their niche and their industry, I was able to mention them in my pitch. So that kind of helped even convert higher. So there's definitely a lot of strategy behind pitching, but at the end of the day, it's like you have a great service to offer and that person would be a dream client to work with. So all you're doing is just introducing the option to that person of working with you. And if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, no harm done. Like the worst thing that can happen is they say no. And if they say no, I usually say, awesome. If you do have any friends that um, are in a similar area, like I would love to serve them or the timing's right. Um, so yeah, it's really, it's fun. Yeah, it, it really gets to be a ton of fun. And the main thing with like cold pitches is not thinking of yourself or your service as being an inconvenience exactly. to them. Exactly. Because you know that you're there to help them. And if mm -hmm. you go in with that, like you said, it's about them. It's about showing them how you can be helpful. That changes the way it comes across when you're not like, oh, I need a client. So I need to make this sale. And exactly. having one out of 10 people is like a very good conversion rate. Yeah, totally. And it, yeah, as you said, it's very much like you don't want to assume that they're going to knock it down or assume that they don't need it. Um, like I remember my first client that I got from cold pitching, she was very established within the industry, but she's had so many bad VAs and hires. And she was like, your timing is actually perfect because I was looking for someone. Um, and she said, you know, like, I'm so glad you reached out because it's such a good fit and it was what I needed. And so it's definitely like, yeah, putting that front of mind for them to fill a need. Yeah. And when you talked about like doing the research beforehand, I know a lot of people think that that is so time consuming, like yeah. putting in that energy, that effort, that time. And yes, it does take time and energy and effort, but that direct message that yeah. showing that you care, that conversion rate's going to be so much higher because you have that direct connection with them. Whereas yep. social media and building an audience will take so much longer. Way more time. You don't have that short <laughs> yeah. connection. It's you and then that person is way out there, way extended. You don't know if you're even going to reach them. So what exactly. you're doing is shortening the process and increasing your chance of converting them into a client, which I think is brilliant. So yeah. people should accept cold pitching <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> Definitely. And I think on the time aspect, it actually doesn't take that much time to research someone. Like I feel like people over, over complicate it or over analyze it, but it really doesn't take that long. Like when I'm researching, I basically just look for what is it that they do? Like, so I have a clear idea of who they are. Um, but then I usually look for like one thing I can celebrate them, whether it's like a launch they did or, um, you know, a lot of my audience are like 
new mum, so like that kind of thing, or they just got married. Um, but then the other thing is then looking for a connection point. Like, is there a mutual friend we have in common? Or is there an event they spoke at that I attended? Or like just finding some form of connection piece. Or even it was like, Instagram is my favorite place to hang out um, because I love ex like finding new educators like you. I came across your Instagram page and loved it. Like that's the connection piece. So finding those three things is pretty much all you need. And it literally, obviously it will take a little bit of time to get used to, but I would say it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes per person to research them. And so that's not like a heap of time, as you said, compared to actually growing a whole Instagram following. <laughs> Making an Instagram post would take me hours. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Back then. So that's, <laughs> that is so much faster. So how did, when you grew so quickly from three, was it to 27? Yep. So how did you manage those first clients so that you could grow so quickly? Mm -hmm. Um, it was difficult, <laughs> especially because I hadn't had a business before. So, um, in the very beginning, it was honestly a lot of trial and error. Like I would be, I worked way, like a lot, way too much, um, to over deliver, but it was also just because I didn't really know a lot of the framework or the systems or how to improve something and that kind of thing. Um, but once I kind of got to 10 clients, I definitely found more of a groove. So I like batched my client work days, um, on like two days a week. And that's kind of like how I streamlined it and improved that process. And then once I had the systems, I was then able to hire help to outdo that client work like alongside me. Um, but I'm so glad that I really took time to create better systems for clients and like write out the workflows um, because I want their result to be the same, whether it's them or their best friends that came across my business. So it was very much like the systems allowed me to do that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I managed them, but definitely a lot of trial and error. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said before, everything comes with a whole lot of trial and error. Exactly. But in <laughs> those systems, like, there are so many systems and ways to do things. Like when you find a system, stick to it. It's so yep. tempting to be like, oh, that person is doing that. Maybe it would work better. Like, no, find your flow, find that system, yep. stick to it. If it's working, especially, and then you can make it better. Or if something's kind of falling off track, just tweak it. Yeah, so exactly. So it's just looking at what you're doing instead of getting like distracted by the noise. Yeah, so true, so, so true. So if you could give someone three actions to take today to move forward faster in their business, what would they be? Love this question. Um, the first is have a very clear offer because it needs to be like a no brainer because no matter what point of mark, like no matter what marketing technique you use, it's not going to convert over in pitching, in referrals, in anything if it's not like a no brainer fit for them right now. Um, and that includes pricing within the market, all of that kind of stuff. So first action step is refine your offer if you need to. Second is identify like 20 dream clients who would be a great fit for the service that you offer. And then do some research on them and pitch them. <laughs> like it's literally that simple. Um, they're kind of the three I would start with. And then from there, meant like add in about your referral program, like on in onboarding emails, offboarding emails during the client process, like saying that you offer them X amount for, you know, any other friends or anything that they know of that um, would benefit from the services. But yeah, definitely those three, like clear offer, identify dream people and then pitch them. Um, and you will definitely, the more you do that, see more clients come in. Um, that is so true. That is so true. If everyone didn't write that down, write it down right now. I know I did. <laughs> so Hannah, if people want to find you and follow you or work with you, how do they get in touch with you? Yes. I, ironically, I do hang out on Instagram, <laughs> even though we've been talking about social media, but, um, my like URL is with Hannah and co. And then my website is with Hannah and co.com. Um, and yeah, have my services and any other helpful information you need. Um, I have a YouTube channel, that kind of thing, if you're looking for more education. 
perfect and I will have her links below the, in the podcast description and the video description on YouTube so you guys can connect very easily and quickly thank you so much for spending this time with us Hannah thanks for having me it was so fun of course want to learn more about different marketing strategies to bring consistent clients into your business without feeling the pressure to post on social media, make sure you watch the free training on the client connection method, which is in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with us today.